Good news guys, I have finally bought myself another van, Houdini 2.0. After a couple of months of not having a van due to it being stolen, I have finally bought myself another one. Purchased this guy just this morning off Facebook Marketplace. It's in very good condition, it drives a dream, just like the car I had a couple of months ago. I thought I'd bring it to you to kick off today's episode and introduce him because you're gonna be seeing a whole lot more of him in the videos to come. So Houdini 2.0, I've got another van, I'm very happy about it, let's dive into the episode. Yes guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through nine of my very best sold sales items on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. I'll be giving you a look at my weekly sales figures just to let you know how I've gone this week. But I have a very, very good featured reseller of the week as well, so stick around for that. If you are here for the very first time, guys, I put out three videos every single week right here on this YouTube channel, documenting my journey as a full-time reseller now nine months into the game. If you wanna learn a thing or two about how to sell on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, place, then hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, it'd be very much appreciated. The first item to kick off the episode was a football jersey that I had just simply lying around the house, and I think that's a great way to start as a reseller, also a great way to start the episode. Let's do it. So just last week, my dad was digging around the cupboards and he pulled out a few different football jerseys, one of them being this 2003 Brisbane Lions jersey. Now, I'm a big Brisbane Lions fan in the AFL. I was a little kid when they won their three-peat back in the early 2000s. This was their premiership year, 2003. So I thought for that reason, there would be some really good resale value on eBay. I've gone ahead and I've priced this out at $59.99 and it ended up selling for $56.95. So not too bad of a price point there. I've ended up profiting $42.23. Brisbane Lions are playing some really good football in the AFL at the moment and the football season is obviously on. So for those reasons, I think that was why this Brisbane Lions jersey went on to sell. It was a really good size as well, uh, extra large, so you're always looking for the slightly larger size. For me, they just seem to go on to sell better when it comes to clothing in general. Um, so to make $42.23, to not even have an initial purchase because it was just simply found around the home, was a pretty good way to start the week. So the second item that I've got here is a pair of Levi Strauss 501 jeans. Now these are a very good pair of jeans whenever you're finding Levi Strauss in the thrift. It generally goes on to sell pretty well for me. A 16 day sales cycle on this one. I did pay up. I paid $14 for these in the op shop. I do tend to find jeans between sort of $5 to $10. So $14 was definitely on the high end, but I knew that I could get a pretty good price for it. I, I listed them for $79.99 and I got an, in the end a sale of $69.99, which I thought for a pair of jeans in the op shop was a pretty good result. Now when you take out fees and postage, $7.32 for post, $9.10 for fees. I've profited $39.57 in the space of just 16 days. So I am sort of pivoting away from doing button up shirts and, and long sleeve shirts, things of that nature. And I'm putting my time and attention a little bit more into denim. For this reason, you're making a few more dollars for your time. International sales are still proving to be a real winner for me, guys. I'm really happy to have finally put this into action because I am starting to make regular sales on a weekly basis. This was just one of a few that I've been able to make this week. It was a pair of Insight denim shorts. Now, Insight's a really great brand. I probably wouldn't buy this sort of an item if I went out thrifting now. This was 109 days worth of a sales cycle, back to my inexperienced thrifting days. But I'm doing the end relist strategy on eBay and it's proving to be a real winner for me as much as international postage is as well. These have sold in the space of 109 days, but they sold after two days of doing the end relist strategy. I paid $5 and they sold for $54 with international post to Greece. So look, it's amazing that somebody in Greece would actually want to buy these for $5, but if they do, I'm happy to send it to them. Um, I've ended up profiting myself $17.98. So in the end, I've kind of got away with one here because I, I think if I sold them locally, they probably would have hung around for a little bit and I might've only made myself about 10 bucks. So to cop a little bit extra on the international post uh, and make a few extra dollars there. I was pretty happy to uh, sell for a $17.98 profit. I think I've got away with one. Now guys, if any of you out there have any clothing items or shoes or anything of that nature that you guys no longer wish to resell, feel free to get in touch with me on my Instagram. I had one of you guys out there uh, who sent me a message and said, Matt, look, I've got some shoes. I know you're doing a lot of shoes. Um, would you like to buy 10 pairs of shoes from me? And I said, yeah, absolutely, let's have a look. And to his credit, he had some very good shoes at a very fair price. I've paid $10 each. For 10 shoes, I paid $100 and uh, I received them in the mail in excellent condition. These were one of them, these New Balance uh, running shoes. Now, I do like selling New Balance shoes. I believe this was a men's pair of shoes from memory. 
Um, I paid $10 when you split it all out. That was including postage as well. These individual shoes sold for $59.99 on eBay within the space of just three days of listing them. So a very fast sales cycle, $7.32 postage, $7.80 in uh, fees. I've profited $34.87, exactly what I like to make when I'm selling my shoes. The next item is this Patagonia jacket that I found in an op shop a few weeks ago in a trip to the thrift episode. I paid $15 for it, the Patagonia brand. I've sold a wetsuit recently for $200. This puffer jacket was gonna be upwards of $200 as well. It ended up selling for $149.99, the full asking price, which was just awesome. The fees were $19.49 and the uh, postage was just $7.32 in a small satchel. And uh, I've ended up profiting $108.18. Patagonia. If you can find the brand Patagonia out there, you can pretty much put the dollars in your pocket. It just goes on to sell really well. I will say that I've recently jumped onto a band five on Australia Post, which is referencing the $7.32 in postage. So I am saving quite a bit more money there, which is fantastic. Um, this one had a 69 day sales cycle on the jacket, but I do think obviously now that we're coming into winter, there's every reason as to why this jacket has finally gone on to sell. But a quality item, a great brand, anything Patagonia, you're always gonna get top dollar for. Now, don't you love it when an eBay buyer buys multiple items out of your store? Well, I had somebody take away four Gold Coast Suns clothing items out of my store on Monday last week. So I bought all of these in the single op shop visit um, a couple of weeks ago now. It was a sales cycle of 103 days, so about three and a half months. But just as I touched on with the Brisbane Lions jersey, we're in the footy season now. The Gold Coast Suns are playing some reasonable footy themselves and I knew that this one would eventually go on to sell probably more so individually than a bulk deal. $8 each, all in, I'm about $34 in. It's gone on to sell for $115. Now, the beauty of it when you actually sell multiple items to the single buyer is that your postage cost is a whole lot less than doing them individually. So my postage cost for these four clothing items was a medium satchel. 10 bucks. So a really great result there. Fees of $14.95. It's ended up profiting me $56.05 with that 103 day sales cycle. So anything sort of sporting related, anything jerseys, anything AFL, anything sporting merchandise, I'm always picking up in the op shops and they do eventually go on to sell for some good money. So happy to do that there and happy to see a multiple purchase item come through. Now my sister was cleaning out her house not too long ago, about a month ago, and I asked if she had anything that she was gonna to donate to the Salvos, and she said that there were a few things. So obviously I swept in and I said, what can we do for a deal? And she's ended up giving me some pretty good deals on a few different items, but this one in particular was a very good one. This was Keely Armstrong, the book author, Keely Armstrong. It's, it's definitely one to look out for. A 31 day sales cycle here. Um, I've had 17 books. There was a complete series plus a couple of additionals. I've just gone ahead and bundled it up at a full 17 book set. And and they've got on to sell for $99.98. So I got the full $100, the full asking price on this one. Postage was 18 bucks, the fees were $12.99. Keely Armstrong, I've profited $53.99 in a 31 day sales cycle. So thanks very much my sister, I paid a dollar each for these books, 15 bucks all in. Pretty great result. I thought in this episode today, I would break down my DVD purchase. Uh, the 60 or the 88 DVDs that I bought for $60. It was about 70 cents a DVD. They were all brand new sealed. But this was a time where I'd really had a lot of inexperience in selling DVDs and I just really wanted to give it a go. This was back in January, so about four months ago now. We're talking a 102 day sales cycle. I've got the numbers. I've listed them all up the minute that I bought them and I've just been slowly trickling away over the last few months. The update that I have for you, 48 DVDs have gone on to sell in that space of time. My uh, paid cost for those sold items was $33.60, and I've ended up selling them for $664.97. So just some crazy numbers there for some DVDs. Uh, the postage, 223, the fees were $99. I've profited $308 on 48 DVDs. So with another 40 to sell, I think the profit at the end of the day here will be about 500 bucks. But what I'm more so, I guess, happy about in this scenario is that I've been able to sell 48 DVDs in the space of just 102 days. So every second day, I'm selling a DVD out of this bundle. So for sure, there is definitely money in DVDs. And I think especially if you can find the ones that are brand new and sealed.
Now guys, I've been putting a lot of time and attention into my shoes. I put out a lot of YouTube videos recently around how I sell my shoes and what to look out for when it comes to selling shoes. I wanted to put this one into the video today. These were the Adidas, I think they're the I5923s. Um, very good condition, bought in an op shop. I deliberately want to put this into the video today because of the purchase price. I paid $18 for it. And I think that's more comparable to what you guys are seeing your shoes priced at when you're out doing your op shopping. I'm very fortunate here on the Gold Coast to be able to get my shoes for around four to ten dollars um, to, to buy these for eighteen dollars the reason that i did is that i knew that the resale value was going to be about seventy dollars based on the model of the shoe and the condition of the shoe so in the end it did it sold for sixty nine dollars and ninety nine cents the full asking price when you take out fees and postage i always like to make 30 bucks on shoes these have profited me thirty six dollars and fifty seven cents so when you know your numbers a 42 day sales cycle not too bad either when you know your numbers, you know what you're expecting to want to make as well. For me, it's 30. For you, it might be another number. I knew that at that $18 purchase price, I could get the sale at $69.99 that would net me the result that I want. So basically what I'm trying to say here, if you know your numbers, you can determine whether or not you want the purchase. So they were my nine best sold sales items of the week, guys. Hopefully you got some value out of those. Hopefully you can find a few of them in the thrift yourself and go on to make a few extra dollars. Uh, let's dive into our featured reseller of the week now. And this week we've got Macy from Blue Consignment. She goes by Blue Consignment on YouTube and on her Instagram. Definitely go and give her a follow and a subscribe. All the details to her channel will be in the links in the description below. But she's doing some great things and she is back on YouTube after a month or two off. And she's got a 20 day challenge. She's listing 20 items onto her uh, selling platforms over the next 20 days and documenting that journey with a new video every single day. So go and give her a subscribe, check her out. She's got some awesome videos. I asked her during the week uh, to send me through an item that she's actually selling a few of and, and having some success, with, uh, some success with. And she sent me through this one item which was a cocktail and formal dress. So the cocktail dresses are proving to be a really good selling item for her because she's actually seeing that there are a lot more weddings uh, taking place this year as opposed to last year with the coronavirus. So very, very smart to pick up on the fact that there are a lot more weddings and she's now selling a lot of these type of dresses. She's given me this one particular item, even though it did have a 102 day sales cycle, it profited her $50. She bought it for $6.99 at a local Goodwill and she ended up selling it for $72. So an incredible result there to make 50 bucks on a cocktail dress and a very smart item to be on the lookout for as well. So uh, look, an awesome channel, an awesome YouTuber. Uh, go and check her out. She's is, uh, doing great things in the reselling community. Uh, Macy from Blue Consignment, you're our featured reseller of the week. Let's dive into the sales numbers to let you know how I've gone this week. I've been able to sell 55 items and uh, a total revenue there of $2,098. So both of those numbers I'm very, very happy with. Fees of $314, that's about 15% of my overall revenue. $402 worth of postage costs and my new inventory, the, the new items that I've bought to sell, I spent $353 this week on those. So my net cash flow position, $1,028 this week. So guys, I'm very, very happy with that. And I really do think they are a blueprint sort of a setup worth of figures for anybody out there that's trying to make $1,000 on eBay. My average sale price is around $30 to $35. So if your average sale price is around that figure, these are pretty much the metrics that you're gonna to need to be able to hit that $1,000 on a regular basis. You wanna be doing about 50 to 60 sales. You wanna be doing about a revenue figure of $2,000 a week. Um, obviously over the course of a year, that would be about 100 to 110,000 in revenue. Um, fees obviously are always gonna come out around that 15% if you're promoting your listings. Obviously the postage costs will come out. If you can get on an Australia Post setup, I'm obviously now on a band five. So that's helping my postage number get reduced. Um, and then the new inventory as well, you wanna be buying about $300 to $500 worth of new inventory every single week to keep that store fresh as well. I've got about 950 items in my eBay store to give you some context there. Um, and I've been able to net myself $1,000 on a regular basis each and every week. So let me know in the comments below, are you trying to be a full-time reseller? Do you wanna try and get $1,000 a week in eBay sales? Because it's absolutely possible. And hopefully these numbers broken down like this can give you some guidance as to how to go about getting there. Um, let me know in the comments below what was your best sold sales item of the week as well. I always love to read that. Um, do appreciate you tuning into the video. If you're still here watching now, I can't thank you enough and I look forward to catching you in my van in the new episode coming up on, uh, on Tuesday. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you then.